back with Getting to Know You. And today, we're getting to know an unlikely celebrity in rugby league, Mr. Stephen Downs. But there's only one way we could start this interview. Hello and welcome to this Tetley Stadium, the home of the Dewsbury Rams. Mate, tell us about your rise to stardom. <laughs> because you're the media manager, media and marketing manager here at Dewsbury and you're really proud of your job, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I love it. I think it's a brilliant club to work for. Um, I love the fact that the fans are so loyal and they've taken me in and, and helped me out in you know, what I want to do. And um, well, I'm sure we'll come on to talk about the videos in a minute, but you know we are doing plenty of other stuff around the club, which is, you know, of the benefit of of making Dewsbury's name getting out there more. Um, you know, people have heard of Leeds and Wigan and all the big names. You know, but we're a local club here, but we we like to get our name out there because they are an historic club, and like I said, I do like my job here and, and working here around the club. One thing I want to do is take it right back because I started in this spot. It essentially is a volunteer. I started rugby um, back in 2012 because I had passion yeah. for the game and I wanted to showcase the personalities, the players. You volunteered and that's how you got into rugby league. And people out there who say to me all the time, oh, I want to get involved with rugby. The best way, because clubs don't have a lot of money, is just mm. to put your hand up yeah, yeah. and go do some work experience and get involved because most of the time clubs will take free help. Yeah, so I was at Huddersfield University doing a, a sports journalism course and they, everybody wanted to go into football and, you know, really met themselves known in, in that sort of sport, being a, a, a volunteer journalist. And the tutors at the uni said, you want to go do something different? So rugby league was an option. So uh, Sheffield Eagles were looking to, for some media volunteers. Uh, I went there. Uh, did some stuff there with an o another of my uh, student uh, colleagues called Adam Whiteside, who's now doing great stuff with the RFL. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and we were both at Sheffield doing match reports, doing articles for the website and all sorts. Um, and that was when they were playing at Doncaster. And then a volunteer job similar to that opened up here. And um, obviously it's a bit closer to where I live, uh, rather than going down to Doncaster every weekend. Oh, I, I did enjoy it at Sheffield. Um, so I came here, been here two years, uh, doing voluntary stuff, you know, putting articles on the website, uh, doing social media work, uh, writing match reports, all that sort of thing. And then, um, luckily enough, I was I came out of uni, got my degree, and uh, looking for a job for sort of six months. And then the chairman rang me up and said, do you want a job? So I said, well, yeah. I said, I'm not really doing anything right now apart from putting applications in. So, yeah, no no, no worries. So, yeah, I've been doing this job now for just over a year. What's been... Let's go on to the pitch now, because what's been your best memory um, or special day, special moment since you started here with the club? What, what game oh. sticks out in your mind? Which player has really... Uh, is really got in in here in, yeah, in yeah. the big heart of Stephen Downs um, I mean I love Paul Sykes as passion I have to say he's a local lad he does it for the club you know he, he's really passionate about this town and this club um, but I mean a, a special moment was probably Widden us away this season I mean that was a brilliant win we no no expectation to go to Widden us, you know Super League team coming down to the championship got some very 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 good players um, we went there and we just you know, we, we beat them on their own patch and we'd not done that for a, well, a hell of a long time. I can't remember when I did my research how long it was, but it was <laughs> it, it was it was a lot longer than 10 years, put it that way. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that was a special moment. But, yeah, I'd say Paul is, is the one, really, that I think if I ever do leave the club that would be the player that sticks out in my mind and he's the one that the fans really, you know, identify with the most because, you know, he's always uh, talking to the fans uh, after games, you know, he, he gets in there and um, and he don't mind doing that side of the game either, you know, he's, he's really, he's a, a brilliant personality. You mentioned the derby before, the derby is literally, what is it, a couple of miles max? Yeah, uh, 1.3 miles. 1.3 miles. Closest uh, rugby league derby in uh, of a sport. Is, it, is that true? Well, as far as I'm about, unless there's one closer in Australia. <laughs> I don't think there is in Australia, mate. <laughs> Pretty spread out in Australia. So 1.3 miles down the road. Um, give us a few of the differences, because there is differences between Dewsbury and Battle. Give us some of the differences between the people, the club, the mentality. Yeah, I think, um, you know, Batley, we're, we're friends off the pitch. Uh, both chairmen know each other, you know, all the staff sort of know each other. 
But I think the main difference is, is, is how we market games, the different type of things we do. Batley do some great stuff, um, you know, in terms of the community and getting people in for coffee mornings and breakfast mornings. We're doing the Rampage Club on a Monday night, which is getting local junior sides in for a free training session because of our fantastic facilities we have here, the 3G pitch, the gym, the wrestle room, all that type of stuff. Um, and, and the way that we put things out on social media, Batley use a lot of graphics, we use a lot of uh, sort of homemade techniques as you were, yeah. such as the videos and that. Um, and I think, you know, there are a lot of differences, but like I said, you know, while we're rivals on the pitch, we are very much friends off the pitch and we do try and, you know, help each other or take ideas from each other. And, you know, I know Danny Warm very well, as I'm sure you do. Yes. Uh, it's only one uh, Mourinho. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he always says hello when, uh, you know, when, when we meet, whether it's at their place or, or here. The video itself, the one that blew you up. <laughs> I remember seeing it thinking, you know what? I, was I, I, I love it because... <laughs> Because it were it were raw yeah. and it were real and it's like the championship is not a wash with money. No. And one club who I think are the best at at the moment are Warrington. Yeah. For for doing creative uh, content with social media, and I think everyone should like look at what they do and follow them because they don't spend a lot of money. No. And you went out there passion and you really did. He sold it. Yeah. yeah. I'm like. He really loves this club. He really what this this derby means a lot to him and the town, and 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 it did blow. You've done a few videos like this. What do you think this will be the difference? What what, what were the difference? Um, I think uh, I, I mean we've been doing them all season, and people hadn't know really took that on board, and we were getting 500, 600 views, which was great. Yeah. Uh, and then the Batley one went to, I think, 42,000 views in the end. I think it's the, probably the most viewed video Jewsbury's ever put out. Uh, <laughs> that says a lot about social media, doesn't it? Because yeah, yeah. it's like, it only takes a little clip. Like, we had yeah. uh, Paul Wood swearing last year on TV. Yeah. And it got hundreds of thousands. Yeah, social media goes mad. It's crazy. Um, and, and, you know, people were liking it from other side at world that I'd never, I'll probably never even meet. <laughs> Um, and I think the thing was with that one, I, I'd taken a bit of abuse, which genuinely does not bother me at yeah. all. I've had that all my life, being registered blind, um, being in school, having, you know, being bullied and all that sort of thing. Um, got to the stage where you know a few words on social media d does not hurt me at all. And uh, you know, a few of my media colleagues at different clubs sort of stuck up for me and said that I were doing a quite a good job, which was very nice of them to say. Yeah. Um, but. As I've said through all this, you know, obviously we'll go on probably to talk about the Wigan thing, but I don't do the videos for myself, I do it for the club. And if if, if it means that Dewsbury's name gets out there more because of these videos, brilliant, all for it. But then Wigan, get on the phone, the biggest, the most historic club in rugby league for, for what they've won. They get on the phone and say, there's only one man who can sell the Wigan Saints derby. The biggest derby, uh, the original derby, actually. If, yeah, you, yeah. if you look back in the history of, of the word derby, Wigan Saints is the original. Um, what did it feel like when Matt Hennessy gets on the phone and says, Stephen, we need you? Well, I'd only talked to him once before, and that was because we'd had a loan player come on, and, and that was literally a two-second conversation. So when, when he rang, I didn't really know who he was, to be honest. Yeah. And... Uh, he just said, do you, want to, do you fancy coming down to Wigan? And I said, yeah, no problem. He said, it's all expenses paid. I said, even better. <laughs> so I said, uh, I'd, I'd jump on train. So I got on train and went to DW and did me thing. And then uh, it was a case of, um, they put it out. I think they wanted to originally do something around Eddie Hemmings' yeah. last game type thing. But then they also wanted to get me in to do one. Yeah. And they thought, because the Batley one had blew up so much yeah. the week before, they, they thought, well, it's the opportune time to sort of get me in. But uh, I thought it was great that the fact that, you know, Wigan saw what I was doing. And the, again, that helped get Dewsbury's name out there. That put something out there that put Dewsbury on the map. People recognised, you know, that uh, the Rams do exist and they are here. And uh, I think that was... That was brilliant. They let me sort of do some stuff around the Dewsbury Batley Derby, other derbies, Hull Derby as well. And uh, I think it's just great for rugby league. I genuinely do. We've had last two weekends festivals of rugby league with the Bash yeah. and Magic Weekend. I was there for the Bash, yeah. Magic Weekend really touched me. I, I, were, I was hosting the fan zone and I met all the learning disability rugby league players yeah. from uh, community integrated care. And the highlight of my Magic Weekend was at the half time of the Wigan Warrington game. 
all the teams played, and one of the, the kids from York got the ball, went off his little pitch, run all the way down to the, in, under the sticks, put the ball down, and obviously the cast fans behind it had seen him running. Yeah. As he puts the ball, they all jump up and cheer, and he's just, he's just, and I just thought, what it meant to those those boys, girls, men and women playing, and the inclusion our sport. Now you, like you mentioned there, you registered blind and you've been bullied as a young person, and yet against all those odds, you've you've put you you've been confident enough to get out there, to go volunteer and not let it hinder you. It must, yeah. That must have been quite a hard road to walk. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, when you've had chairs pulled from underneath, you're smashing your head on cupboards and. Uh, you know, other, other things had happened at school which weren't too uh, too nice. Um, but it, I've always been a case of get on with it. I can't change that, I'm registered blind. No, but, you know, I can't do all about it. Uh, it'll, I'll have it for the rest of my life and it'll get progressively worse. So you might as well live for now and just get on with, uh, get on with enjoying what you want to do. Um, and that's great you mentioned about the, the inclusion in the sport. I have found that, to be fair. You know, uh, I think that rugby league is separate from a lot of sports in the way it helps you know disability people and the way it tries to include as many different fractions yeah. of society as possible and um, all for that and if if that can go further brilliant and if we can have more and more events for uh, different uh, different fractions of society but also disability people it's um, brilliant brilliant what does the future hold for Jewsbury uh, the future holds many different things. I think uh, it's uh, if we can keep progressing forward off the pitch, try and strengthen the club with more sponsors. Uh, the Rampage Club, if that, uh, that's taken off, but if it can uh, somehow we can do something a little bit bigger with that, uh, all great. Obviously, a lot depends on on the pitch matters. Uh, but hopefully, if, if the on the pitch matters uh, go well, then you know it means that the off pitch matters can go. Bigger and better. I'm looking forward to the. I think this club can can really grow. It's got. It's definitely got potential if directed in the in the right way. You know. 1895 cup. Yeah. A real opportunity for every championship side to play at Wembley. Yeah. What would it mean to Dewsbury people to get back on that bus <laughs> down to the big smock and play at Wembley? Uh, I think it would mean the world. Yeah. If, I mean, obviously, we. Yeah. We, we, do you like the competition? Even though it's more games, uh, I like. Yeah, I do like the. I think yeah. it's a. I think it's a different competition to the Challenge Cup. Yeah. I like the historical aspect to it. Yeah. Um, I think it needs to go grow more. Uh, probably get a sponsor in place, or you know, maybe. Uh, I think the final could be played before the Challenge Cup final. Yeah. You know. Probably. Um, I know that that's probably been a bone of contention. But um, overall, I, I do like the idea of the competition, and I think if, if given time to grow, it, it will become a not one to obviously rival the Challenge Cup because it can't, but it can be a separate competition in its own right and not just a, sort of a, in everybody's shadow. And if we get there, I mean, that, <laughs> that would be just an amazing achievement in Lee's first season in charge. Yeah. Genuinely would. Um, and it would give a real boost if we can get a win uh, in the first round over Swinton. Uh, you know that that will be a, a great achievement, and it will hopefully knock on then to the league form, and uh, we can you know start climbing up the league again. So yeah. All right, thirty second elevator pitch, straight to camera. Why should people come down to Dewsbury and give it a go? You should come down to Dewsbury because it's a great family club. We are really trying here, both on and off the pitch, to improve things. It's a great atmosphere. You should come down and, and give it a go. Yes, you could go to Leeds, you could go to Wigan or Bradford, but there's no place like Dewsbury, and we'll be always grateful and appreciative of your support. So come down to the Tetley Stadium, make sure you get down here. Keep doing what you're doing. The main man, Stephen Downs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.